Point-to-pair ultrasound is very helpful in the evaluation of a potential ectopic pregnancy. Here's the image you're trying to achieve with this scan. In this image, you can see a gestational sac located within the uterus and a yolk sac there within it. Always start with the transabdominal approach first. To do this scan, a full bladder is essential to provide an acoustic window into the uterus. Start by holding the curved array probe, also known as the abdominal probe, in longitudinal orientation. The indicator should point to the patient's head. Place the probe immediately above the pubic symphysis. The next three steps must be completed sequentially. You must complete each step in order. If you're unable to identify a structure, you cannot proceed to the next step. The first of the three steps is to identify the bladder. The bladder is below the pubic symphysis and, if full, should appear as a well-defined, circular, or rectangular-shaped black structure. Once you've identified the bladder, you can proceed to step two, identifying the uterus. Look for the body of the uterus just posterior to the bladder, along with the endometrial stipe, fundus, and cervix. Once you've identified the uterus, you can proceed to the next and final step to identifying an intrauterine pregnancy. Sweep through the entire uterus to identify an intrauterine gestation. Once you've performed a thorough sweep in longitudinal, you should do it again in transverse. To diagnose a pregnancy, you need to see both a gestational sac and a yolk sac, which is the earliest definitive sign of pregnancy. In a more advanced pregnancy, you may see the fetal pole in place of the yolk sac. You must then ensure it is contained within the uterus. If you do not see a yolk sac or a fetal pole within the uterus, you cannot confirm an IUP. You would declare not a definitive intrauterine pregnancy. If you see a beating heart and you are confident it is in the uterus, you can confirm a live IUP. If a transabdominal scan is not definitive, switch to the transvaginal approach. For the transvaginal scan, your patient needs an empty bladder. Have the bed set up for a pelvic exam with the patient's buttocks at the edge of the mattress. Prepare the transvaginal probe by first applying ultrasound gel and then the sterile probe cover. You'll also need to apply some lubricant gel on the probe cover. Orient the probe in the sagittal plane. The probe marker faces upward towards the ceiling and the hand is in a trigger hold position. Insert or have the patient insert the probe into the vagina, aiming towards the tailbone. Stop when the probe is against the vaginal fault. As with the transabdominal scan, complete the three steps to seeing an intrauterine pregnancy. And once again, the three steps must be completed sequentially. If you're unable to identify a structure, you cannot proceed to the next step. Push the probe handle towards the floor to identify the bladder. In the sagittal view, the bladder is visualized in the near field to the left of the screen. Next, identify the uterus, which is always next to the bladder. If finding the uterus is challenging, perform a large sweep. A retroflex uterus may require you to lift the probe handle towards the ceiling, thus aiming the probe towards the coccyx. An antiflexed uterus may require the opposite. Push the handle down to raise the probe up. Now that you have identified the uterus, sweep through the uterus in the sagittal orientation. The simplest way to do this is by simply flexing and then extending your wrist. Rotate the probe so that the marker faces toward the patient's right. Once again, simply flexing and extending your wrist will allow for a full sweep. Sweep through the entire uterus to identify a definitive pregnancy within the uterus. Focus on the area of the endometrial stipe. To diagnose an intrauterine pregnancy, you again need to see a gestational sac and a yolk sac and ensure it is contained within the uterus. If you do not see these findings, you cannot confirm an IUP. Your diagnosis is thus no definitive IUP. If you see a beating heart within the uterus, you can confirm a live IUP. Findings on ultrasound that indicate an intrauterine pregnancy vary with gestational age. The first sign of definitive pregnancy is the gestational sac and the yolk sac, which can be visualized at around five weeks on transvaginal scanning and about six to seven weeks on transabdominal scanning. The fetal pole is seen about one week later at six weeks by transvaginal scanning and seven to eight by the transabdominal scan, and cardiac activity is seen shortly thereafter. In rare cases, you may be able to image a gestational sac containing a yolk sac or fetal pole outside of the uterus. This is definitive of ectopic pregnancy. However, more commonly, you will diagnose ectopic by finding no definitive IUP in the setting of an elevated beta HCG. It is extremely important that you avoid a false negative scan at all costs. Failing to diagnose an ectopic pregnancy can be a life-threatening mistake. Always start with transabdominal approach to find the uterus first and then the pregnancy. Always ensure the pregnancy is within the uterus. If you focus on the fetal pole and skip the step of identifying the uterus, you may see a pregnancy in the fallopian tube and call it intrauterine. 
Do not be fooled by the presence of a gestational sac only without a yolk sac or fetal pole. While this might be due to very early gestational age, it does not confirm an intrauterine pregnancy. Other causes are also possible, such as miscarriage, local hematoma or cysts, and of more concern, the pseudogestational sac of an ectopic pregnancy. Don't forget about the possibility of heterotopic pregnancy. Consider this rare situation if the clinical picture fits, even in the setting of a confirmed IUP. For example, IUP plus abdominal pain and free fluid. This is especially important to consider in the patient who has an increased chance of multiple gestations. Also, make sure the patient's bladder is full during a transabdominal scan and empty during a transvaginal scan. Otherwise, you may not be able to visualize an IUP that is in fact there.